Hey everybody, Pine Golem here, and today I'm going to be going over the best cultures in the ancient era. I'm going to be going over a tier list of every culture and how they rank against each other, and I'm going to be giving some pros, cons, and tips on how to play each of these cultures so you can get the most out of your early game as possible. So for each civilization, I'm going to go over pros, cons, and a few tips on how to play them to their maximum effect. I'll be ranking all civilizations on a scale of D to S. S means that they are incredible, they're great all the time. A means that they're good all the time, or sometimes they're great. And it goes down from there. The key takeaway from this is that cultures can be strong at different times in the game and in different map types, game speeds, difficulties. And knowing uh, when uh, a certain culture is really powerful and you can get the most benefit out of it is going to matter. The rankings I give here are pretty loose and you still need to be aware of your game situation and how the cultures work to get the most effect out of them. The Phoenicians are B tier to me. I think that their trait is pretty powerful in the long run, but it's really hard to make a lot of use out of it in the short run. You won't have that many pop and you won't have that many uh, money making jobs for those pops to operate to get the value out of this ability. Uh, compared to a lot of other traits in the game, uh, especially in the ancient era, that give you instant uh, resources that you can use to boost yourself from turn one. That being said, as you progress into the mid and late game and have 40 pop in a city and 20 pops making money, uh, this will give you an insane amount of value. So I think you just need to be planning for the long term with this pick. Uh, their other great benefit is that they get to cross the ocean in the ancient era with ships. Uh, which lets you meet players on another continent and trade with them, like in the first era of the game, which is incredibly powerful. And my tip is that you really need to use that uh, extra ability they have. And if you aren't playing on a map with continents uh, and ocean crossings to meet other players, I would not really recommend them as much because you lose out on one of their biggest benefits. I would consider the Zhou to be an A-tier civilization, uh, they have great science from their unique building. Uh, if you can place it next to two or three mountains, you get a lot of science. And early game, getting 15 science totally locks in uh, the three stars in the science category. And you can get that from just one of these buildings. Besides that, their trade offers a lot of long-term value from making all of your districts provide stability. That just means you can have 20% more districts, which is great. Um, in terms of their unit, it is pretty strong. Uh, the heavy cavalry is a pretty nice unit in my opinion, and the extra bonus from stability really stacks a lot of strength uh, all into one attack. You know, you can get a 29 strength attack if you're stable, which I think is really powerful. Uh, that means that even if you're fighting into spears, you will still be, uh, you know, kind of at 21 strength, uh, which is still really powerful. You can practically ignore the negatives of pikemen with this unit. Uh, in terms of cons, um, the stability benefits are not helpful kind of immediately in the game. You know, from in the first uh, few turns of the game, you're not going to be running into stability problems. So this culture does not give you that early speed boost that some other uh, slightly better cultures will give you. The other big issue is that it is a influence affinity sieve, but it does not actually give you any more influence. So it's going to be hard to get influence stars, and influence stars give you more score as this culture. So you're kind of losing out on some points very possibly due to the fact that they don't give you any extra influence. Finally, my tip for this culture is to pick it if you have mountain ranges. That will really leverage the science benefit and just boost your science through the era. Also, definitely go for district stars throughout the whole game, because you'll be able to use districts really efficiently with that stability. I think that the Olmecs are B tier. They give you a lot of extra influence, which is good, uh, and influence early game uh, helps you settle much faster, so it's really a great time to be picking an influence sieve, but I think that their major con is that they don't really provide that much influence. One influence per territory is okay, but you already get one influence per pop and several base influence per city, 
So I think that this benefit is kind of drowned out by a lot of the other sources of influence that everyone gets. On top of that, their emblematic unit is pretty situational. It loses the indirect fire ability that archers have, which is actually a huge nerf to the unit. It has extra strength to compensate and it doesn't cost any more production. But the fact that it doesn't have indirect fire, I would consider a huge, huge issue uh, for using them to great effect. And one tip to use this culture to the best effect would definitely be to rush out three cities as fast as possible. With that extra influence, you should be able to afford your third city well before other players can in the ancient era, which should definitely give you a huge leg up on every star. I think that the Nubians are A tier. They're really strong. Uh, their emblematic unit is quite powerful because it can indirectly fire at full strength. It means if you wanted to, you could rush out a bunch of them and focus fire to kill units really quickly from any positioning on the map. Uh, their unique uh, trait also gives them a lot of gold, and more importantly, it gives the gold kind of instantly. It's really easy to collect resources, so the plus five gold that you get Per resource uh, happens almost immediately within the first few turns of you settling a city. Uh, that tempo that you get is really powerful if you make sure to spend your gold right. My only con, which is pretty small honestly, is that it has slightly less uh, long-term value than some of the other traits in the game. It's not like a per pop effect, for example, that will kind of keep scaling and scaling throughout the game. Per resource, you will keep getting more and more resources, but I wouldn't say that it scales as well as some other options. So, the Mycenaeans are S tier. Uh, they're one of the most powerful cultures in the ancient era. They have a lot of pros, but probably the biggest one is their emblematic building. It's probably the best emblematic building in the ancient era. It provides uh, great defense, great stability, and most importantly, since it harvests the production in the area around it, you can expect to get at least 10 production from putting one of these down, which is, you know, upwards of the best possible maker district placement you could get. And on top of that, it has defense, uh, vision, stability, and it lets you spawn units farther ahead. It just does so many things. It has the strength of like four districts. Um, so you absolutely want to spam build these as soon as possible everywhere uh, for the industry benefit as well as the defense. Besides that, their unit's great because you get it really quickly, it doesn't cost any resources, and it's powerful. So you should definitely build a few to uh, take advantage of them and get a few kills for military stars. One extra note on how to play them well. If you're against the AI, uh, the AI will often attack into you, uh, even without considering things like forts. So try to position your troops around forts and let the AI come to you, uh, and you can do insane amounts of damage to them with that plus three strength of being near a fort. And if you're enjoying this video so far, leave a like and subscribe. It's the absolute best way to support this channel and more videos like this one. I think that the Hittites are C tier. The plus one strength is pretty nice if you can stack it with a bunch of other things that give strength. For example, if you can get, you know, two levels of veterancy, if you go into the Huns in the next era and get plus two strength on cavalry. Once you start getting five strength above the enemy, it becomes really consistently powerful, and this can be a component of that. Uh, but the cons are, on its own, it's not that great. Uh, there's a lot of situations in the game where plus one strength won't really make a difference in the amount of damage you do. Once you're five strength below someone else, there's very little change uh, in the damage being done there. So there's a very short range uh, of four strength above and below uh, where one strength will actually make a difference. On top of that, I think that their unique unit is really interesting and fun to play but it is a little difficult to rush out really quickly, and it's difficult to get a lot of militaristic stars with it. Uh, it requires one horse, one copper, which you may be unlucky and not get. Uh, it requires a more expensive tech to unlock, so you aren't doing it, you know, turn 10, per se. Uh, and since it can't go over walls, 
uh, you can't really attack cities to farm kills on those hordes of garrison units that the uh, that cities have, which is one of the best ways, I think, of getting militaristic stars. If you decide to play them, uh, I would recommend you really keep your eye out for how you're going to expand to get those resources, and make sure to build other units in addition to your emblematic unit uh, to support them and take advantage of your emblematic unit's suppression mechanic. Uh, which lowers the strength of enemies by 5 when you hit them. You definitely want to follow up on that with plenty of attacks from other units. Harappans are definitely S tier. The raw amount of food they give you is incredible. Uh, one food per tile really scales well throughout the whole game, and you get huge benefits from it on the very turn you pick them. Uh, all of your outposts, which probably have food around them, will just start growing way faster. Even before you have a single city, you'll find benefits from this culture. Because of their strength, they're pretty straightforward to use, and my only tip is to settle on rivers to get extra benefit from their trait. The Egyptians are similarly S-tier, because their effect is quite similar to the Harappans, except it's for production. Uh, one production per tile uh, is incredible, because many, many tiles have production on them, and this effect gives you an immediate buff to all of your outposts and cities. Your outposts will uh, finish faster because they are harvesting more production around them, and your cities will be building districts much faster because of the additional benefit. The sheer amount of production you gain from being Egyptians just makes it an incredible civilization to do practically anything in the game. If you want to rush someone with a military, Egyptians are great. The Huge production lets you build districts uh, as well as units at the same time. You can be growing your economy while attacking. And their unique unit is quite strong. Uh, it's like the only 24 strength unit in the ancient era, I think. Uh, and the fact that you can move after shooting means you can cycle a bunch of them together to all focus fire on one unit, which is really powerful. Again, they're so strong that really my only tip is to make sure you're settling on tiles with production to get as much out of their trade as possible. Next up we have the Babylonians, which I would consider an A-tier culture. The amount of science you get is pretty significant, and more importantly, it's science that you get with almost no other investment. You don't need to grow pop, you don't need to harvest a resource, you just get science per tech. Uh, this effect alone will basically guarantee that you are getting all of the science stars in this era. And almost more importantly than the trait, I find the research affinity to be incredibly powerful. Because in this game, you want to go as slowly through each era as possible to get a lot of points. And if you're able to research in the next era ahead, because you're the Babylonians, uh, that just means you can stay in the ancient era even longer and still be getting new technologies. Uh, one great additional pro of this is that you can get swordsmen uh, really quickly if you want. It's only one tech into the next era. And if you're the only Civ with swordsmen and you start attacking someone next to you, uh, you pressure them to go immediately end the era they're in and go to the next era, which will make them lose out on a lot of points. So I think Babylonians are A tier and they're pushing on S tier if played properly, in my opinion. I would consider the Assyrians to be C tier. They definitely have a good building that provides two influence per turn and is pretty cheap. It can be bought with influence. Uh, I think that really helps with early game expansion. And the plus one movement is useful for scouting and military action. But their whole uh, ransacking theme uh, does not seem to translate well into the game, especially on any difficulty faster than normal. The problem is, on harder difficulties and faster games, uh, your opponents will quickly claim land around you and turn them into cities within just a few turns. Assyrians are really made to be strong in that period of the game where people are slowly building outposts around you, but those outposts haven't finished yet and haven't been turned into cities or administrative centers yet. That's really the only time that you're going to get a lot of value out of them. They don't have great long-term value throughout the whole game, and their unit and building is designed for this early game, unfinished outpost phase of the game. 
So my tip is to definitely not play them uh, if you are playing on anything slower than normal speed. And if you are playing on normal, you really need to uh, rush into them, you know, quickly rush out of the Neolithic era and start building your raiders. And also uh, make use of their expansionist affinity by trespassing into the AI's territory to bait them into attacking you. And once you win those battles, you will generate a lot of war score, which will help you with wars against those AIs for their territory. So, that's my ranking of every civilization in the ancient era, alongside with a few extra tips. Here's the overall tier list, uh, if you want it for reference. Just to summarize what makes the different cultures different tiers, uh, you can note here that uh, two of the S tier cultures both give plus one yield per tile. I think this is an incredibly strong benefit that almost doesn't feel appropriate for the ancient era, uh, especially uh, when no other cultures besides these two have it. The problem is that it provides immense immediate value, as in it works on outposts, uh, but it also provides incredible long-term value throughout the whole game, whereas no other culture quite has that for both the immediate buff and the whole game buff. You'll note here that there are no D-tier civilizations uh, in this pass for this era. I really don't think that any of these civilizations are terrible. I think even though Assyrians and Hittites are C-tier, in the hands of a good player, they can be played to great effect, and on any difficulty easier than humankind, they should be very feasible to win the game with. Really, uh, as the game is right now, you can win by picking any of these cultures. So I really recommend that you play whatever playstyle you enjoy the most, and only really use these tiers to understand what makes a culture powerful, and maybe if you're trying to beat the hardest difficulty, which I actually have a video on that you should go check out. I hope this video was helpful, and if you have any more questions about anything about humankind, leave a question in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. In the meantime, have a good one.